Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials. Today's element will be iodine. Now, um, iodine naturally occurs in seaweed in the form of potassium iodide, um, but kelp has much higher concentrations. So um, this here is all kelp, which I collected off the beach, and um, I've totally dried out. Um, so we're going to try to extract the potassium iodide out of it, and then add some uh, sulfuric acid, and hopefully we'll end up with some iodine vapor, which we can condense into pure iodine crystals. Um, so that's the process I'm going to be attempting today. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to burn this down into ashes. So uh, I'll be back when that is done. So let's see if we can set this stuff on fire. Oh my. Here, I'll be back if I figure a way to light this. It seems to be pretty difficult to light. Okay, so I managed to get those um, ashes reduced um, until they were like white. Uh, so you can see in there, that's what they look like. Um, I've just stuck them in this uh, crucible, and we're going to try to um, get them really hot and finish burning them. Um, so anyhow, I've just set this up like this with my blowtorch. If you have a Bunsen burner or something, you can use that. If not, you can just use a setup similar to this. Anyhow, so when we have that fully reduced, then I'll be back. Okay, so it has probably been um, half an hour or so, and uh, these ashes have soaked pretty well, I'd say. Um, so there might still be some potassium um, iodide that did not get soaked up, so we will save the ashes. But next, we have to filter it off. So we just have this canning jar with a nice filter. Um, so we're going to pour in our solution and um, filter off any of the um, ashes. So we'll be back when that is done. Okay, so now that the filtration is complete, you can see our liquid is uh, fairly clear. It's a bit foggy. Um, but anyhow... Uh, so we're going to go ahead and stick that on a burner and boil off all the water until just uh, crystalline solids are left. That should be the potassium iodide. Um, now, to, with the ashes, just add another uh, one and a half cups of water, and um, hopefully that will re-dissolve any uh, potassium iodide that did not get um, dissolved into this solution. So um, after, we will do the same process with uh, this stuff by filtering it off and then uh, dehydrating it by boiling off all the water um, and in the end we should end up with some uh, potassium iodide um, so I'll go stick this on the burner boil it off and we'll see what we get okay so I've boiled it down um, you can see all that crystalline solid in the bottom which should mainly be potassium iodide now it's possible that there's also some um, salt in there um, which is sodium chloride but uh, hopefully it's mainly potassium iodide so what I'm going to do is scrape all this out and stick it in a jar. And then I think I'm actually going to divide it in half. Now there's two ways to actually get iodine out of potassium iodide. Uh, the first way is just to add some sulfuric acid. And I did make some of that in a previous video, which I'd like to try. Um, the second way is to add some hydrochloric acid and then some hydrogen peroxide. And then um, iodine should precipitate out of the solution. So I think I will test both ways, um, after, uh, so I'll split this in half. Uh, so I'll be back after I scrape this out. Okay, so you can see that right there, I've scraped off all the potassium iodide off of the pot and stuck it in that small vial. Um, so, what I'm planning to do is uh, measure out half of that into this canning jar, add a bit of water until it dissolves, and then add the hydrochloric acid and then a bit of um, uh, hydrogen peroxide. Uh, then iodine should precipitate out of the solution. I'm going to save the other half of our potassium iodide to try the sulfuric acid um, method, but um, if this seems to work fine, then I'll probably just add the rest anyhow. So, first, let's measure out a bit of this stuff. Let's see, uh, maybe a bit more. I do think that this will work, so I'm going to put a fair amount in. And we just need to dissolve it in a bit of water. So, um, here, I'm going to stir that around, and I'll be back when it's dissolved. Okay, so that appears to be dissolved pretty well. So now we're going to add our hydrochloric acid. This is muriatic acid, which you can pick up at Home Depot or something. Uh, it's not that uh, expensive by any means. So uh, we'll add a bit of that into there. And we'll seal that up well. And then we'll see what happens when we add our hydrogen peroxide. I got this from a pharmacy. It's food grade. 30% uh, concentration. Ooh. There we go. It turned color. 
I think that means that we've confirmed presence of uh, iodine in there. Okay, I might play around with the combination of water and different stuff, uh, but then we'll probably filter it off. Okay, well that didn't seem to actually work. It did turn bright red or something at the beginning, like brownish, um, which does confirm the presence of iodine, but then it went back to clear, um, looks kind of yellowish clear. So, um, I don't think it really worked, but, um, we're gonna try the rest with some sulfuric acid. Now, this here is that, uh, 70% sulfuric acid, which we made in a separate video. We're gonna be attempting to use this for iodine. So, in a small container or something, we're gonna add the rest of our potassium iodide. Uh, now, hopefully, this is gonna work. This is my last chance. We also have to go get some more kelp and redo the whole process. So, uh, there's the rest of that. It's a fair amount in there. Um, and then we're going to add a bit of this uh, sulfuric acid and then stick this uh, bath of ice along with um, salt and water, which is super cold. And if iodine c does come off, hopefully it will get condensed. So we're going to carefully open up sulfuric acid and get our jar ready. Whoa. Doesn't seem to be doing much, but it did turn a dark red color. Perhaps I should have heated the sulfuric acid beforehand. Let's, um, oh wait, there is vapor coming off. I'm just going to leave that there and see what happens. Um, I'll be back if anything happens. So, um, that dark color on the bottom of the jar, I finished adding the rest of the sulfuric acid that we made. Um, oh, I zoomed in too much. Uh, that dark color at the bottom really, really looks like iodine to me. I really think it is iodine. Um, so I'm going to let it finish reacting, um, and then I'm going to add some cold water to it and uh, attempt to get some of the iodine out. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm really hoping. And yeah, I'll be back if anything else happens. Okay, so neither of those processes actually worked, but I'll end up showing them in the video anyhow sh to show you what not to do. Um, now those are the two methods that I came across online. Um, but there's a simpler method that I thought of that would probably work. Um, so I went to the beach, got more um, kelp, and uh, got some more potassium iodide here. And uh, so what we're going to do with this uh, batch is we'll dissolve it into solution, and then we'll take um, some chlorine gas and bubble it through, which would hopefully displace the iodine, creating potassium chloride and pure iodine, which we can filter off because it'll be a solid. So how we're going to make the chlorine gas is with something called sodium hypochlorate. So it's a, a white powder and this is actually bleach. Um, white, um, so bleach is 4% sodium hypochlorate. So if you, what you could do is you could take your bleach and add an acid to it directly or to make um, it more efficient you could take your bleach and boil it down until you're left with that white solid, sodium hypochlorate. Um, then we'll just take the sodium hypochlorate, and I'm going to use hydrochloric acid, um, or muriatic acid, which you can buy at Home Depot. But if you don't have that type of acid, any acid will work. Vinegar will actually even work at making chlorine gas. So then what we're going to do is, in a separate jar, we're going to add some sodium hypochlorate, and have a, a lid on top, and bubble it through our solution of potassium bromide, hopefully yielding pure... Um, or sorry, potassium bromide, what am I saying? Potassium iodide, hopefully yielding pure iodine. Um, so that is going to be our method, and I'll get out the apparatus and show you in a moment. Okay, so you can see here's our apparatus. Um, so I made this, I might show how to make it in a previous video, but this is a... I, I was using it for a distillation um, apparatus, um, but this is what uh, we're going to do. So in this flask, well, this could be any container by the way, we're going to put in our sodium hypochlorate, and add in hydrochloric acid into there, drop by drop. This in turn is going to generate chlorine gas, um, which will create pressure, so it'll push through over here, and in this flask down here, we'll have our solution of potassium iodide. Now, as the chlorine bubbles through the iodine, it will displace the iodine, and um, then our exhausts will just go out of this um, glass tube over here. Uh, over here. So um, what I was previously doing with this, this is just my simple distillation setup. So you just stick a bag of ice over here and um, boil off your contents. Um, but this works also 
fine for several other applications, which is why I'm using it to make this iodine. So, hopefully this process will work. So, um, we're going to attempt to use this. So, I'm going to go outside, get a solution, a saturated solution of potassium iodide over here, and I'll put our sodium hypochlorite over there and get some hydrochloric acid ready. Um, and it's also a good idea to wear a gas mask because chlorine gas is very dangerous. Um, so, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so we have our apparatus set up. Our solution of potassium iodide is in here, and there's our sodium hypochlorite. I have our uh, muriatic acid, um, also known as hydrochloric acid, and a syringe to inject it in. And here's our setup. So if my voice sounds different, it's because I'm wearing a respirator. This is so that I don't breathe any chlorine gas in. And I'm also wearing gloves and safety glasses. Because I'm not too sure what's going to happen. So, what we're going to do is open up our hydrochloric acid and um... Actually, we're going to need a container to pour this into. Here, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have our acid poured into a lid so we'll actually be able to suck it up. So... Oh, there we go. There's a bit of acid there. We'll just leave that in the fringe. We'll open up this side of the flask. And we're going to want to quickly stop it as soon as the acid is added. Now, um, I might try it all at once. Drop-wise would be better, but I don't have a good way of doing that, so... Now let's see if anything's going to be happening. Chlorine gas is definitely being generated. So... It's bubbling through. This is probably all normal right now, though, so... I'll be back and tell you if anything happened. So I added a bit more sodium hypochlorite, and uh, once the chlorine got right through the tube and down here, you can see the solution darkening. That's the iodine precipitating out. So if we leave this for a while, and let it continue to bubble until all that sodium hypochlorite is used up, we'll have lots of iodine suspended in the solution, which we can filter off. So I'll be back when all this has been used up. Okay, so after a whole lot of chlorine is added, yeah, iodine will actually start to precipitate out. So, if we take a look here, I'll hold that up in the camera. If you see any of that black powdery stuff in there, that's your pure iodine that's coming out. So we don't have very much at the moment, but as we add more and more chlorine to the solution, we will get more and more iodine. So, hopefully we'll get a fair amount out of this, so I'm going to continue. I just wanted to show you what the iodine will look like when it's precipitating out. We probably got iodine from the sulfuric acid method, we just didn't quite add enough sulfuric acid to precipitate out enough iodine for us to actually filter off. Anyhow, so when this is done, I will show you. Okay, so once you're happy with your yield of iodine, um, then you're just going to filter it off. So uh, let's see what we got here. Pour it into the coffee filter. Kind of reminds me of bromine. I bet I could make bromine the same method with potassium bromide instead. So uh, you can see all that stuff in there, all that gunk left over, that's all iodine. So I'll probably end up trying to rinse that out into our filter. Um, you can also see there's lots of iodine in the filter. So to have this all into the filter, I'll be back. Okay, so as soon as that's all been filtered, you can see we're left with that sludge at the bottom. Now that's our iodine crystals. So um, now you'll notice that there's lots of iodine in the paper and stuff, and there's certainly still some in the solution. But those particles are just too fine to filter out. The bigger ones are what we have, we're after, and I can see that there's plenty in there. So what we're going to want to do next is just place it in a desiccator bag, which is basically a bag filled with uh, some sort of hydroscopic material, such as sodium hydroxide. That means that it just sucks water out of the air. So if you place it in a bag with some sodium hydroxide, which is a lie, you can actually find that at home hardware um, as household lie then it will um, actually dry out all of this very rapidly, what you want to do. You do not want to dry it over heat, because the iodine will vaporize into iodine vapor and you will lose your iodine. However, you could purify it that way by uh, vaporizing it, then recondensing it. But I don't think I need to purify it. I'm happy with my purity. So once this is dry, I will show you what the final yield looks like. Okay, so it's kind of dark now, but I'll... Um 
in that jar is the solution where we made um, the iodine from the potassium iodide and um, I was thinking that we could probably get the iodine out of the solution the stuff that wouldn't come out with the filtering so what I've done is I put some ice water with some salt in it on top to make really cold water on top and then I'm heating up the bottom and the iodine is vaporizing and hopefully condensing on the bottom of the jar I'm just gonna quickly take a look oh yeah uh, you can definitely see a bit of iodine coming there so I'm, I'm gonna replace that on so if we leave that for a while we'll definitely scavenge a bit of iodine from the solution so that's always a good idea um, while you're waiting for your other iodine to dry so I'll be back when I have both these iodines ready so after sticking your iodine in the desiccator bag for a while um, you can see it's all dried out now this is my storage container here so you can see our nice iodine crystals they're quite dark um, but when you heat them up, they turn a uh, vibrant purple, uh, violet smoke. It's beautiful. Um, anyhow, and then here's my ampule that I stuck some in. Um, that's uh, for my element sample. And then um, with this stuff, probably what I'll do is I'll uh, go to the store and buy some ammonia and uh, add it to the ammonia and make some nitrogen triiodide. So I'll uh, look for that in an upcoming video, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make some nitrogen triiodide. If you don't know what nitrogen triiodide is, it's one of the most sensitive explosives known to man. Even a decay from a radioactive substance can make it combust and blow up. So that'll be very interesting to try out. So um, can't wait to make some of that. Anyhow, so there's how to make pure elemental iodine from some, a couple of household materials and a bit of seaweed which you can get from almost any beach. So um, anyhow, hope you enjoyed. Okay, thanks. Bye.